So as you can tell, I've already added the base layer of this piece and I've added in these preliminary details. So I really don't have that much more to add in the dark. Um, I just need to kind of add a little bit more definition here before I move on to the highlights. Because as you can see, like, you can already tell where the dark areas are, so I don't wanna do too much. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that my brush doesn't have a ton of water on it. So like I just dipped it and then, you know, wiped it off a bit. And then I'm gonna go into this color I'm using here for the dark parts. And I'm not gonna be using that much water, but it's not entirely dry brushing, you'll see. So I'm gonna lay down some of these areas and then I'll use some water to spread them out in a second. But a lot of this you could just blend out too. Like so. But I might use some water here to blend this out. But the importance is to make sure that you blend everything so that it looks like it's really smooth and there isn't like chunky differences between the colors that you're using for light and dark. And some more water just to make sure it blends out. but I'm gonna go back in and add some highlights as the final step when this layer is dry. So if I do accidentally get some parts a little too dark, then it's okay. I can still fix it. And that's really the beauty of watercolor is that like nothing is permanent really. So you can always add water or more color and fix things later. but it's important to use a lot of water in this layer, not necessarily when you're loading up pigment on your brush, and, but um, after you've already put the pigment on the fabric so that you can blend it out appropriately. And don't panic if you see kind of like spots like this. Um, they'll dry and it'll look uniform, I promise. <laughs> and if it doesn't, well, you could just add some more water and fix it. And there are definitely areas that I'm not going to blend out as much because those really do need to be dark. But you'll see. now for 
the darkest of areas, I am going to add this final super dark color, but I'm going to use it like really sparingly because see how dark it is. So before I even add anything, I definitely want to brush off most of what's on my brush so I can only have a tiny bit on there. Because you definitely want contrast, but you don't want too much contrast. Otherwise, it doesn't look realistic anymore. And by realistic, I mean in, in terms of light and dark. Like, there's no way this drawing is realistic. No one is this orange, I hope, but it's all fantastical. And with this darkest color, you really want to make sure you blend it out. Like so. Just gotta add some water to that. Really wanna make that cheekbone pop. And you can make it even darker by kind of like layering how much you use but each time you do want to blend it out but then you can add more and blend that out too And see, I just made this area way too dark accidentally, but my best friend Water is here to fix it. And that truly is the beauty of watercolor, is that you can definitely kind of wash away your mistakes most of the time. Just gotta make sure this all blends out. And the darkest part of the cheekbone is closest to the side of the face, so I'm adding some more there too. And gotta add some inside the ear. But also right here. And you can also use that intermediary dark color to help blend this out too. So eventually, you know, you're gonna wanna have the whole thing covered in water again, um, just to make sure that you actually blended everything. So that's where we're at now. And because I'm nitpicky, I may add a couple more areas of darkness, but you know me, I'm just a perfectionist. And don't worry, I'll highlight this in a bit, so that's all okay. I 
And because there's already a lot of water on here, it's pretty easy to blend this stuff out. All right, and I think we're done with round two of this color edition. So as you could tell, there's a lot more definition here now. And so that when I do go back in and highlight, add the highlights once this is dry, there will definitely be a lot of contrast so that the face looks shaded realistically, but there won't be so much contrast that it won't look weird. So, sorry, I'm such a perfectionist. I really like to make sure everything is super blended and that everything looks consistent on here. So, that was step two of this process. I did film step one, but I accidentally forgot to press record. So today y'all are only getting steps two and three of this piece. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, go look on my IGTV and YouTube because I have more tutorials like this. And I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.